We have finally gotten to the adaptation of the Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie into the manga, and you can celebrate because it's not too late to get your hands on a piece of the then, now, and forever Gohan merch line that celebrates Dragon Ball Super Superhero, the movie, and now the manga, available in t-shirts, multiple different types and hoodies, as well as different colors and sizes, ships all over the world. This merch line was the most successful I had ever done in the channel, and and now is your chance to own then, now, and forever. The link is down below. During the climax of Dragon Ball Super Superhero, Gohan, the main character of the film, achieved his most powerful transformation yet. He became what Toriyama referred to as Beast Gohan, who would go on to quickly and effortlessly completely annihilate the film's villain Cell Max. But afterward, fans of the film were wondering, where did this transformation come from? Was it just Toriyama pulling something out of his rear and there was nothing to it? Was it just a creative ending for a film? Or is there more to Beast Gohan that isn't necessarily surface level? And thus, on this long-awaited edition of the Transformation Guide, we're going to delve into Beast Gohan. And by the end of this video, you're going to know everything about Beast Gohan, where it came from, how he achieved the form, where he got it, and how it ties into his life going all the way back to Dragon Ball Z and culminating in Dragon Ball Super superhero. All this and more next. As of the creation of this video, Gohan Beast has only been seen in 2022's Dragon Ball Super Superhero, so if more details come out in the future, I'll be sure to cover them here on the channel. The idea behind the Gohan Beast transformation and Gohan even getting a new form is something fans have wanted for many years and was initially conceived during the early discussions of what would become Dragon Ball Super Superhero back in 2018 with series creator Akira Toriyama and the head of the Dragon Ball room, Akio Iyoku. Originally, Toriyama conceived the new film to be a Piccolo story, but Iyoku suggested that they focus on Gohan, primarily because data that Shueisha and Toei had gathered throughout the years told them that Gohan was a very, very popular character, and if Pan's going to be in the film, you might as well have her father play a crucial role, and because of that, even though the film focuses more on Piccolo than Gohan, Gohan still became the main character, and ultimately Gohan was the one to put a Way Cell Max once and for all. The previous film, Dragon Ball Super Broly, featured not even a cameo appearance by Gohan, and a lot of Gohan fans were really, really pissed at this, and it tells me that they definitely kept an eye out for what the fans were saying both in the West and in the East, which led to Gohan not only getting the spotlight, but getting a new form. Now, why did they go with this new transformation as opposed to going with something like, for example, Gohan achieving a ultra instinct or ultra ego type of situation well the reason for that's because dragon ball in recent years has focused on each character going their own way and discovering their own max power broly has his berserk you know rage form trunks has his ikari form you have goku with ultra instinct vegeta with ultra ego Piccolo, of course, would have Orange Piccolo, and now we have Gohan with Gohan Beast. The reason as to why they are writing it this way is because then you have each character achieve their power through different means and find a form or a power that best reflects who they are as characters. If you want more information on this, check out my video Ultra Ego Vegeta Explained because I go into this concept in that video quite a bit. Toriyama patterned the look of Gohan Beast to resemble not only Gohan Super Saiyan 2 during the Cell games with his spiky hair and smirk, but also to resemble the original concept behind the Super Saiyan transformation. I did a video on my channel discussing the original Super Saiyan look, and based on the original manga and the colored pages, Super Saiyan was not blue or green eyes with gold hair. Goku had a lighter, sort of whitish yellow kind of hair, and red eyes. So there's no question this is a throwback to that. Toriyama said that when he was coming up with the look of Gohan Beast, 
it was a bit different. There was more pale skin and he had a meaner face. But Toriyama chose not to go in that and instead we got this version which for a long time was called Final Gohan in the original storyboard before being renamed Gohan Beast. The transformation was absolutely meant to mimic Gohan Super Saiyan 2 transformation during the Cell games, which is why Gohan Beast sort of looks like a taller version of Super Saiyan 2 Gohan from the Cell games, except of course now he's an adult and his hair is ridiculously much bigger. Toriyama himself said that he got the name Gohan Beast to describe that it was the sensation of a wild beast within awakening, which is a huge clue as to where this transformation came from, but there is more. So in order to really understand Gohan Beast, we have to go back and understand how Gohan himself works in comparison to his evolution as a fighter going into this film. Throughout my time here, I've done quite a bit of videos explaining Gohan's power. Most recently, my Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Explain video, which talks about exactly why 16 speech triggered him. In Dragon Ball Super Superhero, the trigger was Gohan believing that Piccolo was killed at the hands of Cell Max. So, Gohan is a very emotional type of cat, but when you mess with his family or Piccolo, who is his mentor, who he sees as a member of his family, of course he's going to blow up. But that right there, messing with Gohan's family and his loved ones, is literally Gohan's character and the root of his power, going all the way back to his introduction back in Dragon Ball Z. I think a lot of you have to put this into perspective and remember this. Gohan, when he first showed he had that secret power, was against Raditz when Goku and Piccolo were fighting him. And at that point, Gohan had not spent a single minute of his life working or training at all. He was a pampered baby. Think about the fact that in Japan, Dragon Ball came out first and everyone had already known who Goku was and saw his journey from being a kid to being an adult for the past half decade and over 153 some odd episodes. And now, at the very beginning of the Z portion, Gohan, just by getting angry, surpassed Goku and all the work that he did in the previous part of the story. Goku trained his whole life and Gohan just surpassed him in power just from getting mad. I really wonder if Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z came out during the era of Twitter and Reddit and social media, if people would have been calling this an ass pull because of the fact that we follow Goku's journey and suddenly his son is not just way stronger than him well it's somewhat explained by vegeta and napa when they surmise that for some reason a biological one at that human saiyan hybrids while oftentimes more emotional which is actually the core of the power it makes perfect sense combining the biology can produce stronger fighters with bigger potential Later on, many years later, Toriyama would go into S-Cells, which I covered in depth in my Super Saiyan Explained Transformation Guide, but I'm of the opinion that the S-Cells idea wasn't even necessary because the original explanation of humans having compassion as compared to the warrior Saiyans and Gohan being a mix of both is a good enough explanation and one that I've always understood since I was a teenager. The groundwork for Gohan was already laid out early in the series and as it progressed we see him evolve and change and become more brave, a better fighter until eventually it all culminates in the fight with Cell. And you have to understand that Gohan's power is not just something that was cultivated by his anger, but really the purpose of his anger was to justify his power increase within the context of not only his survival, but the survival of his loved ones. It doesn't matter if you can wish people back with the Dragon Balls. Gohan still does not want people to die or be hurt, which is why it takes Goku giving him the pep talk during the beam struggle between him and Cell to get him to realize that you have to let go or you won't win, which is when Gohan truly showed his maximum Super Saiyan 2 power and put Cell away. These principles were mirrored in Dragon Ball Super Superhero. 
if I can be honest and blunt, even though it may seem a bit cynical, the reason as to why Gohan Beast exists as a transformation, as a metamorphosis for Gohan, was really because Akio knew that it would sell a bunch of toys, a bunch of DLC, and get Gohan fans hyped. They could have ended that film with Gohan just powering up his ultimate form and being able to defeat Cell Max with a new power, but they chose to use this aesthetic to visualize not only Gohan going his own way, but also for merchandising purposes. But psychologically, the context still works when it comes to the Darwinian law of survival of the fittest, and Gohan is the fittest when it comes to the human Saiyan hybrids that we've met so far. Some would call this lazy writing because anytime that Toriyama wants Gohan to catch up with everybody else or surpass them, boom, he gets mad, gets a new form. We've seen it time and time again, which is why I do appreciate what they did with Ultimate Gohan. But Ultimate Gohan actually does tie in to Gohan Beast because Gohan Beast is a natural evolution from that form. Gohan Beast is not an evolution of Super Saiyan 2. It's not even an evolution of Super Saiyan God. And some have theorized that when Gohan did the ritual or was a part of the ritual in Battle of Gods, he may have gotten some of that God key to allow him to tap into this form. But there's never been anything to that. That theory holds no weight because we haven't even gotten a clue that's where it came from. No, it's different. Unlike his father Goku, Gohan sees combat as nothing but pain, bloodshed, and tears, and really no positive outcome, whereas Goku's the competitor. He wants to bring out the best in himself and his opponents. Gohan has some of that, but Gohan's really the best example of a pacifist who does not want to participate in combat, but is forced to because he has to do the right thing and protect those he loves. The first time that we really see this is when Gohan goes against the wishes of his own mother to go to planet Namek. He knew that Goku was hospitalized and that only him, Krillin, and Bulma had a chance of getting those Dragon Balls from Namek to wish back the dead fighters. So he had to go because Krillin by himself, just in case they ran to Vegeta, would probably not be able to handle it. And it was on planet Namek that Gohan first had his powers unlocked by the Saichoro, the Grand Elder of Namek. One thing that fans often forget though, is that when he had his powers unlocked by the ancient Namekian, it was only the hidden powers that resided inside of him during that time. So that new power was good enough for the time being, but with stronger and stronger enemies to come, and with Gohan being a boy who had at that point not yet gone through puberty, not yet really developed his bones and muscles, that of a regular full-sized adult, obviously the power unlocked that Gohan would get in the Boo arc from the old Kaioshin, not only was a much more powerful, higher tier god technique, but at that point Gohan himself had developed and thus it had much more of an effect on him. But on Namek, fans often forget that Gohan did get several power boosts. After getting his neck broken by Raccoon, Goku gives him the Senzu, and we see Gohan become stronger and stronger thanks to his rage, specifically in one instance where third form Frieza is pelting Piccolo, just smashing the dude, and because... Much like in Superhero, Piccolo's life was in danger. Gohan's able to power up an immense attack, showing that he is getting stronger and actually forcing Frieza to transform into his final form. Goku figured this out himself, which is what really led to the training that he gave him in the Room of Spirit and Time, where when Gohan first becomes a Super Saiyan, he uses his imagination to remember all those times that his friends were in danger, and uses that same rage boost, that interior animalistic instinctual power, to engage himself into unlocking the form. Vegeta himself says in this arc, when facing Android 19, that he's a bit more wild and aggressive when he's transformed into a Super Saiyan. And that goes right alongside Gohan. Goku figured this out as well, and he knew that he had to conquer this unbridled rage and passion in order to truly master Super Saiyan so that it becomes a natural state in order to reach the next level. And Gohan would, of course, be the first one to do it, going from full power Super Saiyan, aka grade 4, into Super Saiyan 2, which back then, when it first appeared, was referred to as Super Saiyan Grade 5. Now, I want you to remember all these details because all of this ties into my conclusion here in just a moment where I go into 
beast gohan and where it came from in the meantime hit the like button right now on the video and of course leave a comment let me know what your favorite gohan transformation was in the series but back to the story so in the boo saga gohan's biggest power boost to date comes when the old supreme kai the old kaioshin ro kaioshin unlocks gohan's potential and now he truly is a new man he even tells him that there's no need for him to go super saiyan but we soon find out that gohan's ultimate form is also a transformation although many thought it wasn't back when it first happened so if you want more information on that check out the ultimate gohan explain video here on the channel but it was at the end of this ritual that we would get our first tease of what would eventually become gohan beast even though toriyama didn't really intend for that to be the case back when he was writing this story. Gohan's anger activates his new hidden power. We find out from the old Kai that this basically gets you to where you need to be and unlocks your potential without the need for a non-stop training. So Gohan was able to leapfrog a lot of other people thanks to this power and get stronger. This power for a while was able to sort of remedy this idea that Gohan neglecting his training made him weaker. But it was only temporary because when we get to Dragon Ball Super and kind of the Dragon Ball Renaissance stuff, Gohan once again horses around and does not take his training seriously. And it's not until Dragon Ball Super Super Hero that Piccolo finally snaps him into shape by reminding him that Goku and Vegeta are not going to be around all the time and that he needs to always stay focused and ready to deal with threats. If you recall, during the time that Gohan was in Ultimate Gohan, we never really saw him get angry from then on. There were a few instances where he did show some rage, but not quite to the level of what he showed in Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. So when you really think about it, Gohan Beast is sort of a combination of ultimate Gohan and sort of that godly deity sort of awakening power that he had inside of him mixed with Gohan's rage boost at an absolute maximum level. It's sort of like how when Gohan was in full power Super Saiyan and then was triggered to go into Super Saiyan 2, here Gohan was in ultimate and was triggered to go into Gohan Beast. The reason as to why it's not a traditional Super Saiyan transformation or even a God transformation, although there are some similarities, is because in this form, Gohan is tapping into the emotional anger that is part of his human side more so than his Saiyan side. So it's one of those things where because of the human Saiyan biology and the way that they're mixed along with Supreme Rage and the power of the Supreme Kai. So there are similarities to this when it comes to the God forms and even Trunks' Ikari form. There are similarities there, but this seems to be a Gohan exclusive form because as far as we know, Gohan's the only character and definitely the only main character to ever have his power fully awakened by a god, aka in this case, the Supreme Kai, the old one. If you go to the Dragon Ball Super manga during the Tournament of Power, Gohan showed a lot of potential there battling against Kale, and he himself says that he wants to follow his own path, being a mutant hybrid alien different than his father. Gohan's instincts for battle and instincts to survive is what gives him his power, and we see this play out in Dragon Ball Super Super Hero even before the Beast Gohan transformation. Every time that Pan is in danger during Gohan's fight with the Gammas, he powers up into a higher form. Super Saiyan, then of course Ultimate, and later at the end, Beast Gohan. His body was once again getting reaccustomed to fighting because he doesn't always fight like Goku and Vegeta do. Have you ever thought about the fact that when it comes to the villains of the movie, they all represent a different aspect of Gohan? Gamma 1 and 2 are basically a manifestation of Gohan's sense of justice as Great Saiyan Man, and Cell Max is a manifestation of Gohan's pure rage, both tying back to the Android Saga. This is a very subtle connection that Toriyama put in his script that not a lot of fans have discussed since the movie's been out. What happened to Gohan during the Gohan Beast Power is something that 
I guess you could say has similar traits to what happened to Goku in the of Power. Both of them had this secret inside of them and they broke their limits. Gohan Beast is a power that's been inside of Gohan the entire time. A complete warrior with instincts and rage as well as having his power unlocked and can now tap into higher forms and really now is when we're going to see Gohan maybe at his absolute best. And this is why Toriyama has said that Gohan Beast and Gohan himself has surpassed Goku and Vegeta because it's no different than when he did the last time back during the Cell fight. And even going back to the beginning of Z when Gohan, just by getting angry, was able to overcome all the training that Goku did right before his introduction in the earlier parts of the manga. So... Really, to get mad at Gohan Beast being an ass pull, it makes sense, but Gohan's always done things like this because the core of his power is his rage, and when you have rage combined with having your true power unlocked, there's a theory that Gohan Beast could have been deep inside Gohan going all the way back to the Buu Saga. Can you imagine if Gohan tapped into Beast during the fight with Majin Buu? Maybe he wasn't quite mentally ready at that point, but who's to say he couldn't have? I do look forward to us getting more information on this, should any more information come out. But either way, this is the best explanation for Gohan Beast that you could possibly think of. Remember, in the Buu arc... Gohan literally has the same color power when he powers up in front of the Supreme Kai. The same key color, that purplish kind of thing that we saw him use in the Cell Max fight. So was it a throwback to that scene? I think so. And I think really they're trying to have it make sense. And this is the best sense it can. So thank you for watching. Take care. And I'll catch you down the road.